Hello to all and welcome to the third and the final lecture of the Operation Research course. During the last two sessions, you learned what the Operation Research is, how a decision problem can be modeled using mathematical formulations, and finally, how to solve it using either graphical methods or branch and bound algorithms. In this course, you will learn other types of solution algorithms called metaheuristics, which are general algorithms and can solve any small or big optimization problems. So let's start by an introduction on some basic, some, some basic concepts uh, in this domain. So uh, during the first course, you found that uh, during your life, you make numerous decisions from very simple and daily decisions like what to eat for the breakfast each morning to more complicated decisions like uh, which cell phone to buy, which internship to select, and so on. If you think a little bit, you feel that you have been surrounded by decisions and decision-making is everywhere. No matter who makes decisions, a person or a company, we desire that the decision be in a rational and optimal way. We can say that making any decision can be made in four steps as problem formulation, problem modeling, problem optimization, and solution implementation. In problem formulation, you gather input information about your problem, you identify the objective and its constraints. In problem modeling, you model the problem by mathematical or analytical expressions based on the identified objectives and con constraints in the problem formulation step. Next, in the problem optimization step, you try to possibly find the optimal solution or near optimal solution for your model. Finally, you implement your solution and get a feedback to check if the solution works well. If not, you will either revise the modeling part or the optimization part. In this course, we focus on the optimization part to solve the problems using approximation algorithm. So in this slide, let's remind you about the concept of complexity in algorithms. To solve a problem, you know that any algorithm needs two important and limited resources as time and space or memory. With the big advancement in designing super volume computers, the memory is no more a limitation, but time is still a big limitation in designing optimization algorithms. As a simple definition, the time complexity of an algorithm is the number of operations required to solve a problem of size n. The algorithms can be designed with different types of complexity. For example, if an algorithm has logarithmic time complexity, so it takes log n units of time to solve a problem with size n. Or if it has exponential complexity, two power n units of time are needed to solve the problem of size n. The following figure shows how the number of operations increases when the size of the problem increases as well. These algorithms, or those algorithms that belong to the green zone of the figure are called excellent algorithms. Why? Because they are insensitive to the size of the problem and they are super fast. But the algorithms that fall into the red zone are called horrible algorithms, which are very, very slow for solving even very small problems. So uh, in this slide, this table is an example to show you how the number of operations or the time of an algorithm increases by increasing the size of the problem. Consider that each operation takes one microsecond. The last column of the table shows the time of executing an algorithm with the complexity of n factorial. For example, if our problem has size of 20, 
the algorithm takes 19 centuries to solve such a small problem. So now you have a feeling of what we call horrible algorithms. So now let's see the algorithmic complexity for the traveling salesman problem or TSP that most of you may recognize it. In a TSP, we have a set of n cities and we look for the shortest path that visits each city exactly once and returns to the original city. Consider that we develop an algorithm that evaluates all the possible solutions and return the one with the minimum path length. This algorithm is called enumeration algorithm or exhaustive algorithm. In a symmetric TSP, we know that the total number of feasible solution is equal to n minus one factorial divided by two. Therefore, the enumeration algorithm needs to check n minus one factorial divided by two solutions. Look at the table on left. If checking each solution takes one microsecond, the enumeration algorithm needs one and a half billion million centuries just to solve a TSP problem with 30 cities, which is really a very small problem to solve. So you recognize how complexity of an algorithm is important when solving a problem. During the next slide, uh, you learn how to design metaheuristic algorithms that can find even optimal solution for very big problems in less than seconds. So let's start. Uh, first by identifying different uh, optimization algorithms. So depending on the mechanism of solving the problem, optimization methods are divided into two main groups as exact methods and approximate methods. Exact methods are the methods that obtain the optimal solution and guarantee their optimality. For example, the branch and bound algorithm or the enumeration algorithms are exact methods or exact algorithms. It is very good that we would be able to find the optimal solution, but sometimes we cannot really wait until the exact method returns the optimal solution. Remember the enumeration algorithm for TSP that takes centuries to solve a small problem. In this regard, Approximate or heuristic methods are designed to overcome this issue. The approximate methods generate high quality solutions in a reasonable time for practical uses, but there is no guarantee of finding a global optimal solution. Approximate methods themselves are divided into heuristic algorithms and approximation algorithms. The approximation algorithms are problem-specific algorithm that does not obtain the optimal solution, but they guarantee the non-optimality gap. For example, if we solve a TSP with an approximation algorithm, we are sure that the solution is no more worse than, for example, 20% of the optimal solution. Indeed, different approximation algorithms provide different guarantee on the gap. But uh, heuristic algorithms, uh, as I told you, provide no guarantee on the gap and may even find optimal solution if they are well designed. The heuristic algorithms are divided again into metaheuristics and problem-specific heuristics. The problem-specific heuristics, as their name implies, are designed for specific problems. For example, 2OPT algorithm is a problem-specific heuristic for traveling salesman problem. But metaheuristic algorithms are general algorithms that can be used for any type of uh, optimization problem. The metaheuristics itself are divided also uh, into two main groups as single solution-based metaheuristics and population-based metaheuristics. I will explain you uh, the difference between them uh, in the next slide. So, to, to know the terminology of 
uh, metastics. Actually, heuristic is a Greek word as the art of discovering new strategies or rules to solve problems. On the other hand, meta is also a Greek word meaning upper level methodology. So, therefore, meta heuristic means upper level general methodologies that can be used as guiding strategies in designing underlying heuristics to solve specific optimization problems. So now let's discover metaheuristics in more detail. One important thing regarding the metaheuristic uh, algorithm is their search mechanism. Their search mechanism is based on the idea that solution space is like a grid and solutions are all connected or the solution space is like a connected graph that solutions are the nodes of the graph. And in this graph, each pair of the solutions are either, are either connected directly or they are connected via a set of other solutions. So the idea is that by manipulating a solution, we can reach to other solutions. Therefore, the idea behind the metaheuristic algorithm is that by starting from a single solution or a set of initial solutions and manipulating them iteratively, we may reach to the optimal or near optimal solution. Metaheuristic algorithms have different characteristics. Sorry. Depending on their search mechanism, they are divided into single solution-based algorithms and population-based algorithms. As their name implies, the single solution-based metaheuristics start from a single solution and manipulate it uh, with the goal to find better solutions until they reach to the optimal or near-optimal solution. They can be also deterministic or stochastic. They are deterministic if they solve the problem uh, by always making deterministic decisions or taking deterministic rules. For example, if we execute them several times with the same initial solution, so they always obtain the same final solution because they take a deterministic uh, decisions. But stochastic algorithms solve the problems by making stochastic or random decisions. It means that they obtain different final solutions if we execute them several times, even with the same initial solutions. Finally, the metaheuristics can be inherently global search algorithms or local search algorithms. Uh, Population-based metaheuristics that start from a population of solutions are normally called global search algorithms because they are they try to search the whole space globally. But the single solution-based algorithms are called local search algorithms because they focus on local area instead of the global area. In this slide, you become familiar with two keywords in the world of metaheuristic algorithms, which are very, very important, exploration and exploitation. Exploitation, which is also called as intensification, is to exploit the neighborhood of the good solution. In, indeed, the idea behind the exploration, the, the exploitation is that the good solutions are the clue for promising regions where better solutions might be there. Okay? So for example, when you suddenly find a gold coin on the ground, you look around to maybe found Another one, once you find the second one, you intensify your search until no coin is found around you. This is the idea of intensification. But exploration, which is also known as diversification, is exploring the search space with the hope to discover new and unvisited regions. Therefore, in intensification, the promising regions are searched more thoroughly in the hope to find better solutions. While in diversification, non-explored regions must be visited to be sure that all regions of the search space are evenly explored and to avoid local optimal threats. These two features 
are again are against each other. It means that there is no algorithm that would be the best in both criteria. Regarding the diversification, random search algorithms are the best diversifying algorithms because they do random search and have the capability to discover the most of the unvisited region. Okay? Uh, so, for example, population-based algorithms are also powerful algorithms in diversification because each solution in the population may be in different regions uh, of the solution space. On the other hand, the best intensifiers are local search or single solution-based algorithms that only focus on the neighborhood of a solution and ignore unvisited regions. But a good metastatic algorithm is an algorithm that is good enough in both criteria. So from this slide, we go into more details of designing solution algorithms. Uh, in this course, I will not explain you the population-based algorithms and we only focus on single solution-based metastasis. In this slide, I explain you three kinds of algorithms that work with single solution. The first group is greedy heuristic. So the greedy heuristics are also called as constructive algorithms because they start from an empty solution and construct a complete solution step by step. They make greedy choices at each step of their construction. They uh, actually intend to find a local optimum solution, okay? The second group are local search methods. Actually, despite the greedy algorithms, the local search algorithm starts from a complete solution, okay? They manipulate the solution with the hope to find better neighboring solutions, and they move from a complete solution to a new complete solution. They only move to neighboring solution and they may get stuck in local optimum, okay? So as I told you before, these algorithms are powerful in intensification, but they are unfortunately weak in diversification. But the third group is called iterated local search metastics or ILS that makes a balance between intensification and diversification. This algorithm also starts from a complete solution which is locally optimal. Okay? Then this algorithm, the ILS, perturbs the solution to escape the local optimum. And this by perturbing uh, a solution, we attempt to kick out the solution from the local optimum. Next, the perturbed, uh, the perturbed solution is locally optimized to find a new local optimum sometimes. And sometimes during the search, bad solutions are also accepted to again avoid the local optimum. So you see that ILS metastatic has two elements, two components to explore the search space and to have a diversification capability. These two elements are perturbation of the local optimum solution and also accepting bad solutions. So in this slide, let's design a greedy algorithm for traveling salesman problem. The easiest greedy algorithm for the TSP is called the nearest neighbor algorithm. This algorithm has the following steps. In the first step, we select a starting node or city randomly and name it as the current node. Okay, in step two, we go to the nearest unvisited neighbor or the current node. Uh, in step three, we update the current node. If there is no unvisited node, we stop. If not, we go again to step two. And the complexity of this algorithm is n squared. So consider the following TSP example with 10 cities. We select, we select the city one as uh, the starting point. We go to the nearest city of city one, which, uh, which, city, which is city number nine. There is still uh, several unvisited nodes, so we continue and we go to city four. 
Next, we go to CT8, we go to CT7, CT5, CT6, CT3, and uh, we continue, we go to CT2, CT10, and finally, we return to the starting point and the TSP solution is found. So, as you see, the solution found by the greedy algorithm is a good solution, but it is uh, actually it is not globally optimal. So, in this slide, you see that the optimal solution is the solution that can be also found by executing the greedy algorithm when starting from CT9. Okay, so this is a very uh, a very simple greedy algorithm for the traveling salesman problem. So, in this slide. You see that, uh, uh, actually in the previous slide, you saw that the greedy algorithm will not lead to optimal solution, however it obtains good solution, okay? From this slide, we will see more fancy algorithms which are called local search methods. To better understand the local search method, let's uh, narrate you the history of hikers, okay? In our history, we have four hikers who are lost in a foggy mountain at night. Too much scary, no? So uh, they have no map uh, to find the coordinates, but they have only a headlamp to see immediate surroundings, their immediate neighbors. Okay. Fortunately, they have also they have also an altimeter and a camera. By the altimeter, they can estimate at which altitude they are, and uh, by the campus, they can find the direction. Their objective or their only way to survive is to reach the valley with lower altitude, where the reliefs pass regularly. In addition, at trail crossing, each time they can try only one trail. Each of these uh, hikers actually make different strategies and take different strategies to survive or to reach to the low altitude value, okay? So let's see what the first hiker does to survive. He says that I am supportive and I explore all the possible trails until I find the trail that leads me to the low altitude value. Naturally, the result would be that he is hiking infinitely in the mountain since there are uncountable number of trails in the mountain. So uh, we notify that exhaustive search or enumerating all possible ways is not logical and it is really a kind of stupidity. So uh, let's see the second hiker. The second hiker is a little greedy. So he says that as long as I can go down, I do it. The result would be that he will get stuck in a local valley and if no relief passes, he will die. But we note uh, here, uh, what we note here is that greedy approaches lead to local optimal. Okay? So, the third hiker is not as greedy as the second hiker and uh, he says that I go down but sometimes I make I may take passes that do not go up too much. Actually, uh, he attempts to escape some local valleys which are not uh, too much deep uh, with the hope that uh, there would be another neighboring valley which has lower altitude. So what would be the result? He arrives to lower valleys compared to Hiker 2, uh, but he may still get stuck uh, in a local valley. Now let's see what the last hiker does. The last hiker is more intelligent and her strategy is, as long as possible, I take passes with high slope, but sometimes I may take passes that do not go up too much. I also memorize and avoid the trails already taken. So the result could be more interesting compared to the third hiker because she avoids taking repeated trails, therefore she reached to good valley with less effort. So, 
Indeed, short memories avoid infinite loops and may save time. Now, you see how different strategies lead to different results. So, so to conclude, we can say that local search methods are heuristic methods for solving hard optimization problems. You can have novelty in designing heuristic algorithms that can solve hard optimization problems efficiently. Another thing to say is that uh, local search algorithms move from solution to solution in the search space by applying local changes or, or let's say, small changes until uh, a solution deemed optimal is found. Okay? For designing any local search algorithm, two main elements are uh, an initial solution from which the search starts and local search operators that make small changes in the solution and help to navigate in the solution space. So in this slide, let's see what are the what are the advantages and disadvantages of local search methods. Regarding the advantages, we can say that they are powerful in intensification or they are good intensifier because they exploit the neighborhood carefully. In terms of resource computation, they use very little memory and they provide better solutions comparing to greedy methods. But for sure, they have some disadvantages as well. They actually get stuck in local optima. It means that uh, they are weak in diversification. They often require problem-specific operators. Now, what does it mean? For example, a local search heuristic designed for a specific problem cannot be applied for other problems. Uh, and finally, we can say that their performance also highly depends on the initial solution. They actually need good enough initial solution to work well. In the next few slides, I will explain you what are the main components of a local search method uh, at the same time. Okay, and uh, I, I give you examples on the traveling salesman problem for the next slide. The first component of any local search method is the initial solution by which the search starts. A solution can be represented in any form like matrices, vectors, lists, etc. And uh, let's have an example over TSP with 10 cities. A solution, for example, could be the permutation of 10 cities. This permutation shows the order in which the cities are visited. So let's have a permutation like what you see here. We start from city 1, we go to city 4, then city 8, and so on, until we visit the last city number 6. The second component of any local search method is intensification operators that move the solution or manipulate the solution. These operators move the solution to search its neighborhood with the hope to find better solutions. Uh, this move uh, actually should be small since we only search the neighborhood of the solution and not the region or the, the other regions far away. And uh, once any move is done, actually a new solution, a new solution or a new neighbor is uh, created. Let's have, uh, in this slide, let's have different examples of intensification operators for TSP. Uh, the first operator is called 2OPT swap. Uh, this operator selects two cities I and J and swaps the cities between I and J. For example, in the following, you see a solution before doing two OPT swap moves. Consider that two cities 8 and 10 are selected. By doing this operator, the order of the cities between 8, 8 and 10 is swept as you see. So this, or, uh, this order, the order of the cities was already 8, 7, 5, 2, 10, but it has become to 10, 2, 5, 7, 10, 8. So another operator is insertion move that selects two cities I and J and inserts J next to I. So 
you again see an, uh, you again see an example over the CSV to consider that two cities 8 and 10 are selected and city 10 is inserted next to city 8 okay so the third example of an intensification operator for TSP could be the reversion operator that selects two cities I and J and reverse their position. For example, if two cities 8 and 10 are selected, their position in the solution is changed without touching the cities in between. Okay? So, uh, the third, in this slide, I will explain you the third and a very important component for a local search method, which is diversification operators. This component uh, does not exist in classical local search methods. However, adding diversification operators to local search methods are quite necessary. As you remember, one of the drawbacks of the local search methods is that uh, they get stuck in local optima. Therefore, they really need a mechanism to get rid of this inefficiency. Indeed, uh, when a local search method uh, gets stuck in the local optima, a diversification operator perturbs the solution with the hope to escape the local optima. Actually, uh, this operator aims at, as I told you, kicking out the solution from the local optima. But it should be noted that this operator must be strong enough to kick out the solution from the local optima, but not that strong that completely destroys the solution. Uh, this fourth component uh, of an uh, the fourth component of an efficient local search method uh, is having an acceptance policy. Actually, by this policy, we decide whether to accept the new solution or not. Different acceptance policy exists. Uh, for example, remember the history of hikers. One way, uh, one may accept uh, only better solutions or another one may accept slightly worse solutions. Indeed, sometimes uh, it would be good to move to or accept the solution that worsens the objective function, but not too much. So the, the reason is that accepting worse solutions may help to escape the local optima and it may boost and uh, reinforce the diversification ability of the algorithm. So let's go back to our TSP example. A common and efficient perturbation operator for TSP is called double bridge. In this operator, two edges are selected randomly and their position is changed in the solution. Here you see an example. Consider that the first selected edges is the edge between cities two and three, and the second selected edges edge is the edge between cities six and seven. So simply we change their position in the solution. And in the two following figures, you see what happens to a TSP tour if we perturb it by double bridge operator. So, uh, before finishing the course, I will introduce you. Uh, I will introduce to you an efficient local search method, which called as iterated local search, or simply IL. So, in an ILS algorithm, the following steps that I explained to you in previous slides are repeated iteratively. In an iterative way, ILS does intensification move to find the local optima, then it does perturbation operators to escape the local optimality, and finally decide whether to accept the new solution and uh, each, uh, at each iteration or not. Actually, these steps are repeated until a stopping criteria is reached. Uh, for stopping criteria, uh, actually different stopping criteria exist. For example, one way to stop the search is when the algorithm reaches a maximum number of iterations, or another way to stop the search is when the algorithm reaches a maximum amount of CPU time, or even the algorithm can stop if no improvement is obtained. In this situation, uh, either the solution is optimal or the algorithm is disabled to escape the local optima. So the search needs to be stopped. 
In this slide, uh, you see the procedure or the pseudocode of the ILS algorithm. To start the algorithm, an initial solution S0 is generated. Next, intensification operators are applied on the solution to find the local optima S star. Then the diversification operator is applied on the local optimum solution to escape the local optima. So again, we apply the intensification and diversification operators consequently and iteratively until the stopping criteria is reached. Actually, in the figure, you also see what happened when we apply intensification and diversification operators on the solutions iteratively. So let's conclude the course uh, in the next slides. So actually in this course, you learn that uh, there are some problems that are very hard to solve when, um, when their size become bigger and bigger. And indeed, finding the optimal solution for this problem is very hard actually, if not, possible, if not impossible. So you have also learned that uh, different optimization methods exist uh, differing from exact methods to heuristic and metaheuristic algorithm. You also discovered that exact methods are disabled to solve large optimization problems in logical and reasonable computational time. This is actually the main reason that heuristic and metaheuristic algorithms become very useful to solve large problems. Regarding the heuristic methods, uh, you also learned that uh, they can be constructive algorithms like greedy search, or they can be local search methods that uh, search only the neighborhood of a solution and they are powerful intensification methods. And uh, actually, they can be more general, like metaheuristics, which are powerful in diversification. And at the end, you learn an efficient local search method called iterated local search, which has both intensification and diversification abilities. So you learn lots of things. And what is the next step? Uh, now uh, you learn lots of uh, things, lots of different algorithms. And at this step, you are expected to design and implement an ILS algorithm for your case study. Uh, actually, uh, in your design, you should follow four main steps. First, represent your solution algorithm. Uh, your, represent your solution efficiently, depending on your problem. Next, propose a perturbation operator that possibly does not make infeasibility in your solution. So it means when you do perturbation on your solution, this operator will not uh, create infeasible solution. Then propose local search operators that possibly do not make infeasibility in your solution. And finally, implement your ILS in Python. So for all of these steps, we have provided you with useful guides on the website, so please do not hesitate to carefully check the website. Here, I finished the course and thank you and hope uh, to see you again.